high in the majestic snow-covered mountains of Tibet there lived a famous Tibetan teacher by the name of Dongma. But Dongma was unlike the other great lamas and teachers of the time who lived in lamasaris and monasteries. Dongma lived in a simple cave People came from far and wide to seek his teachings. But he was also renowned and sometimes judged because he never refused anyone. He never rejected any seeker who came. He believed that people could learn what they could learn and realize what they could realize. But one day, when Dongma was returning from a pilgrimage, he came to a part of the high mountain in which was located his cave an area that was renowned for its robbers, its brigands. And as he approached the rocks on the side of the road, he sensed the presence of others. And as he passed, he realized that he was being followed but when the four men caught up with him and accosted him, he greeted them cordially like one would greet any other travellers on the road. But they sneered at him and one said, Ha! Huh, look at him. He's got nothing that we can steal. And another said, well, let's just kill him then. And another said to him, we know who you are. And Dongma had replied to these remarks. But then he said, well, if you know who I am, you will know where to find me. And he walked off down the road. He returned to his cave to be greeted by those seekers who awaited him, those seekers who knew that they were never going to be rejected. There were no robes, no rituals, no initiations here. Several seasons passed. And one day when Dongma was sitting outside his cave, sipping his hot buttered tea, he saw a visitor coming up the path. And he recognized him as one of those who had accosted him on the road those months ago. Now the robber approached Dongma arrogantly and said, I've come to stay. Feeling assured in himself that he was not going to be rejected and sent away. But all that Dongma said was, go and learn respect. The robber was quite taken aback. He said, but, 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 you never send anyone away. 
What do you mean? Dong Ma said, Go and learn respect for all living beings. Well, the robber, looking around, realized that he was not going to get any more attention or truck here, so he turned to stride down the path again when Dong Ma said, Wait, wait! And the robber turned back, hopefully, and Dong Ma handed him several slices of bread for his travels. But the robber angrily took the bread and stomped on it under his feet. Dong Ma quietly said, Why are you treading on so many people? And the robber said, What do you mean? And Dong Ma said, Well, there was a sower, a reaper, a grinder, a baker, who took the original seeds that begin and belong to all of the whole. Ha! said the robber. I'll remember that next time I steal some. So Dongma said, Bring me something that you have stolen. And the robber went striding off down the road. Several months passed, and again the brigand took the path up to Dongma's cave. And Dongma greeted him and said, Well, did you bring me something that you've stolen? And the robber rather shamefacedly said, No. Why? said Dongma. Well, said the robber, I began to listen to people's stories. And when they told me their tales of their sufferings, how hard it was to make a living. And I knew that if I stole from them, I would be causing great hardship. I could no longer steal. Well, said Dong Ma, you look pretty well fed to me. Don't look as though you're starving. And the robber said, well, people, when I started to listen to them, they began to give me things, food and lodging and other things. Well, why haven't you stolen anything? A thief is always a thief. I'm not a thief, said the robber. I cannot steal anything. Oh, said Dongma, then you're on your way. Go and spend several months giving, giving without thinking of reward. And then Dongma offered the robber a cup of butter tea, and suddenly the robber noticed a young boy who was tending the large urn, almost as big as himself, which contained the buttered tea, and a fleeting recognition crossed his brow. But the boy looked at him, knowing clearly who he was. And Dongma said, Oh, yes, 
This boy came to me several months ago. He'd been kicked out of his home by his father, who told him that he was nothing more than a crumb on his father's lapel. And the boy, broken-hearted, weeping by the side of the road, was met by a traveller who said to him, Ah, but a crumb is part of the seed, and a seed is part of the whole. And so it brought sukkah to the boy's heart, and he began to think that what was this hole? And so he made his way here. Oh, said Dongma, do you have a name? No, said the robber, I have no name. So Dongma said, well, then you won't mind if I call you Mind Rub. Go, Mind Rub and give. Return in several moons. So off the robber mind rub went, thinking to himself that, yes, indeed, although he'd been sent away, he hadn't been sent away. Several months later, Mindra returned and Dongma asked him, Well, did you give? And Mindra said, It's not easy to give when you haven't got anything. But I gave whatever I was given. I even gave the food that was given to me to eat. Well, said Dongma, you don't look as though you're starving. How did you eat? Well, said Mindra, I, 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 I must have eaten uh, and I must have drunk. And Dongma said, well, did you sleep? Oh, said Mindra, I, I, I must have slept, but I, I, I don't remember. I said Dongma, then you don't need me anymore. Mindra was desolate. But, 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 but but I, I, I don't know how to meditate. If anyone asks me what, 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 what uh, for advice, I don't know what to tell them. Dongma said, well, your first student is doing very well. I don't have a student, said Mindrup. And then Dongma pointed to the young boy. Remember, you told him. He was that that was in the sea, that was in the hall. Oh, he came here of his own free will, said Mindra. Ah, said Dongma, isn't that what a teacher does, pointing the way? He found his way here. And then Dongma relented. He said, well, I'm moving from this place in several days, but you can come to me in three days' time. You have to cross the rope bridge across the gorge and you'll find me. But bring with you a bunch of stinging nettles. But make sure that you do not get stung. I will 
no. So, mind rub, not understanding what was happening, realized that he'd had a reprieve, that there was a chance. And so, after three days, he found a field of nettles and taking off the remainder of his scanty garments, he wrapped them around his hands and picked the nettles and stripped the bottoms of their stems and then he grasped the nettles in his bare hands and began to make his way to the designated place where Mindrup would find Dongma. Clasping his nettles with both hands, he came to the rope bridge over the gorge but he dare not let go of the nettles. So taking the precarious bridge and faintly hearing a great roar, but bringing his mind immediately back to the precious nettles in his hands, he crossed the rocking, precarious rope bridge, swinging from side to side with the winds that were blowing until he crossed and came to the other side where he made his way up the path where he could see Dongma sitting, nursing as usual his cup of butter tea. And Dongma called to him, Oh, how was the river? Was it high? How was the journey? But Mindrup, totally concentrated on gripping the nettles, not wanting at this last stage of his journey to prick himself, He came to face Dongma and laid the nettles down at his feet. Only then did he pay attention to what Dongma was saying. How was the journey, said Dongma, Oh, I don't remember. Was the river high? I don't know, said Mindrup. All I can think of over these days is nettles. Ah, said Dongma, you have learned to bring the mind and the body together in the meditation of life. Now continue your journey. You will know where to find me when you need me. There's a question that arises from this story. And that question is, from your experience, what is that that would follow for mind wrap? After learning the meditative movement of all of life. 
What is it that follows from this? What is it from your experience that is the next step that Mindrup would take? From your experience, what follows from this? So from your experience mm. in meditations, having a focus for those meditations, which is nothing more than a continuous movement, like a mantra or an icon, what is it that follows for the mind after this point? When we need no focus, yes, uh huh. <coughs> like um, after the focus and knowing how to bring everything together, there's nothing. All right, so what happens? Yes, when we become part of everything, we have that recognition of, of that. What follows? Sharing the knowledge. Yes, sharing the knowledge comes indeed. But what follows for us? What has been your path? Self-awareness. Yes. Self-acceptance. Yes. And what did, that, what did it bring? All right, all right, stillness, isn't it? Stand still. Is it so for you? A cessation of movement, and yet life is still meditative, and yet there's been a cessation of movement, isn't it so? Such your own experience. Thank you. <laughs> 